Hello, Jonathan Knight here, um, uh, of Gorhan Central, um, got a new DVD update, I got a few DVDs in the mail, I've had a few problems with a few DVDs though, um, I've been ordering stuff from the UK for my region free player I, told, I talked about last week, all the boys love, that, um, all the boys love Manny Lane, which has not been released in the US yet, in any format, be it theaters, DVD, on demand, whatever. I had not remember released that and Ghost House, the 1980s supernatural Italian horror film from Umberto Lindsay. Um, Ghost House came to me defective, and I had to get a refund, and I got another one coming in. Um, there, I, I lost about six minutes in the movie, or six minutes part of the movie because there was skipping, and at one, at one point in the six minutes, I, a major character died, and I had no idea. Suddenly, he just came carved off in the ambulance because it was skip. Um, and all the boys that love Man Alien never showed up. And I ended up filing a claim against that on Amazon UK and got a gift card. And then I ended up getting um, the new copy of Ghost House and Scanners 2 instead of Man Alien. Because Man Alien might still show up. Um, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But I always wanted to see Scanners 2, so I'm looking forward to that. But meanwhile, I got these in the mail. Oh, shit. And at a pawn shop. They're from the mail and a pawn shop. First one was that came in the mail was the com DVD Blu-ray combo pack of Scott Spiegel's Intruder, 1980s slasher movie, from the producers of Inglorious from the producer of Inglorious Bastards and Pulp Fiction, Lawrence Bender. Um, I think a lot of horror fans should know this one by now. Um, it's a really popular slasher, not as popular as Friday the 13th or The Burning or My Bloody Valentine, but it came out like right at the tail end of um, the slasher era, the 1980s. Um, and it, it, at the end of the 80s, the slasher films started getting really, really campy. Um, Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3, Slumber Massacre Party 2, those were really campy. They, things were getting campy. This one, I wouldn't call it campy. This one actually takes the material serious. Um, seriously. I so serious. It takes it seriously. Um, unlike those, I have nothing wrong with the campy ones, but I highly prefer the early 80s slasher movies which took themselves a lot more seriously um but Intruder is really damn good um I remember I used to have a bootleg VHS this is before the DVD came out I think Full Moon released the DVD originally and it were like a a murky looking um a VHS transfer but it was unrated because the problem with this movie is um the early VHS by Paramount was censored horribly but I got a bootleg from China uh bootleg DHS from the Chinese China uh, Asian print of the movie which was uncut I think it was called The Night Crew that copy but um it was uncut I remember watching it, it was like, fucking awesome and then I, I didn't never bought the full moon disc I rented it a couple times and um that's what I keep on looking because I'm looking at this um because I rented it a few times the full moon disc and this one I wanted to buy right away the problem I didn't buy it right away is because it's a combo pack which means the price was um it was it was more expensive because it has a Blu-ray and a DVD in it. A lot of companies are doing this because they don't think this title would sell by itself on Blu-ray. Because a lot of people when they buy Blu-ray they don't buy Intruder. They buy the Avengers, the Dark Knight Rises, any of the new popular movies. They don't give a fuck about Intruder. The only people that care about Intruder is the cult fans. People buy the DVD because DVDs are less expensive. So by killing they kill two birds with one stone by putting Intruder. Um, and a combo pack with two different formats. But this is a great set. Um, there's a making of commentary track, deleting not, not our extended murder sequences from the original work print and all that. This is a great slasher. Movie. Some of the best death sequences I've seen in um, slasher movies, especially of the late ladies. Um, it was all done by Can B in their first movie as a team credited as a team solo not working for somebody else or anything it's just great work I highly recommend Intruder another combo pack is Thou Shall Not Kill Except this is from actually from the same people that made Intruder really um, Scott Spiegel who wrote and directed um, Intruder produced and co-wrote and has a, like a small part in this movie Sam Raimi who will produ um, helped Scott get Intruder off the ground. He co-wrote... Scott co-wrote Evil Dead 2 with Sam, and he's been his friend for, like, ever. He... Sam Raimi, that's him up there, the director of Spider-Man. 1, 2, and 3, and Dark Man, and Evil Dead. 
plays the main villain movie. And basically, the plot quickly. Cause a lot of this one is not as well known as Intruder, but it's like some Marines come home from Vietnam, and a, uh, like a Manson family cult's kidnapping and killing people and putting them out in the middle of the woods. So these guys get their guns together and go out and face off this family of or these family of lunatics. Um, it's, this movie, in my opinion, is the definition of a cult movie. This movie is very low budget. It was made in 16 millimeter on over 20 grand, maybe. Bruce Campbell produced it, and I didn't think he helped put together 20 grand. And it, but it, it's low budget works for it instead of working against it because it has this great quality to it, and there's a lot of gore, a lot of shootings. The head, body, torso, whatever, you know. Body, torso, same thing. Um, if you're really into cult flicks, if you're all kind of in them, don't check it out. If you're really into cult flicks, if you're like into movies like Bad Taste and all that, check out Thou Shalt Not Kill, except. Uh, I'm so glad I own this movie. I think this is, when I've watched it about a few months ago, it, was, it became an instant favorite for me, and I had to buy it. It took me a while to buy it because of the cold combo, combo pack thing, but I'm glad I got it. And the cover is fucking fabulous. There's two covers. I can show you the other one, because the other one ain't worth shit. This one's the real deal. This one I bought at the pawn shop, and it's the fear double feature, and it has the fear and the fear Halloween night, which is the fear too. I've actually seen these movies, but I haven't seen them since they came out on VHS as a kid. Um, they probably suck, um, but it was two dollars for the DVD. I said, "Fuck it, man! I'll revisit them." Number two has the kid from Puppet Master Four and Five. It has Betsy Palmer in it, and it takes place on Halloween. So I'm probably gonna be watching this one before Wednesday. I'll let you know. Fear one, I'll probably weigh it off on. But actually, looking forward to kind of um, checking them out. They're probably like if they suck, but I don't care. Two bucks. This one I haven't watched uh, since it came out, like 96. I haven't watched it in about 16 years. And that's Stephen King's Thinner. Uh, man, I remember really liking it when it first came out. My mom read it in VHS and I watched it. Have no idea if it's any good, though, still. But um, the idea is good. You know, guy gets cursed by a gypsy and he's a really fat guy, so he gets skinnier and skinnier and skinnier. And he's trying to find a way to reverse the um, curse. Um, so I really hope it's really good. Just released in a Blu-ray, and Blu-ray had a terrible-looking cover. This cover is pretty cool. This one I've never seen, but it's John Claude Van Damme Cyborg. Uh, it's a canon film, and I fucking love canon, and I like John Claude Van Damme. So I'm actually looking forward to watching this one, seeing if it's any good. I'll let you know. Now these last two, only two. I only got two more. Um, and I'll talk about the one last because there's a lot I want to say about that one. Um, and this one is Little Shop of Horrors, the director's cut DVD. Um, if if you probably know what Little Shop of Horrors is, but what you may not know is there was a rig the original ending to the movie was about 20 minutes longer or about 20 minutes long, and it had the two main characters being eaten by the plant, and then the plant a whole bunch of them get bigger and bigger and they take over the world. And it shows them in New York taking over New York. So with the Statue of Liberty and buildings, they're just crushing them and all that. And the test audiences didn't like the ending. They thought it was dark. They wanted the characters to live. So they went back and they shot a typical Hollywood happy ending where everyone happily ever after. But this DVD contains attached to the movie in full color because the original work print was black and white that ending, the um, plants take over the world ending, and I'm telling you right now, that ending completely makes the movie. The rest of the movie is damn good. The musical numbers are good, it's catchy, the cast is good, but that ending completely makes that movie fucking awesome. It went, the movie is awesome, and then at that point, it just goes to fucking awesome. That's how good the ending is. The model work and the puppet, puppet, puppet forget it, animatronic work or whatever, the puppet work, um, Animatronic. animatronic work and the model work is so fucking great that when you think about it, Warner Brothers really, they wasted money because it was five million dollars I heard it cost them to make that ending. And that's, they just threw that away to shoot like another fucking retarded ending. 
It's a waste of money, man. They should just kept ending. Fuck. Test audiences don't know jack shit. But Little Shop of Horrors is the classic for a reason. And the ending makes it even better. The new ending, the alternate, whatever. The original ending makes it even better. Last but not least is a some it's a TV show, it's a sitcom, a horror sitcom about filmmakers. Um, and that's how Hol Holliston season one. Holliston season one. Um, this is a TV show that I was looking forward to as soon as I heard it was announced. It was a sitcom about horror filmmakers trying to get out there and make a film and dealing with their love lives and all that. It sounded like something I would really enjoy. It, the first season's only six episodes because they were just, I think, trying to see if the show would work and if it would get picked up for a second season, which I'm happy to confirm it has a second season in the works. Or I think they just got finished filming the second season and it premieres spring 2013. But enough with that. Halston season one. What can I say about Halston season two? One thing, this is a very, a very independent TV show. This is not going to be as slick and um, professional as um, Big Bang Theory or How I Met Your Mother. It's not going to be as slick as those shows because this is definitely one that was made for much less money. Um, and I will admit it is rough around the edges. Um, Adam Green and Joe Lynch, who created and is starring the show, Adam Green being the director of Hatchet and Joe Lynn being the Joe Lynn. Joe Lynch being the director of Wrong Turn Two and Chillerama segment called Zombie Movie and he has another movie that's taking forever to come out. I think the company I don't know what the fuck to do with it. They star on the show and they're definitely not professional actors. You can tell most of the people on here are not professional actors. But since they're the two main characters, they're not professional actors and the show is rough, but its heart is in the right place. Not only that even though some jokes miss the mark, the jokes that don't are fucking hilarious. And this show is definitely, definitely made by horror fans. There's so many in jokes that I guarantee if you're watching it with somebody who watches sitcoms but don't watch horror movies, they're not gonna get 90% of the jokes. Maybe 95% of the jokes. They're not gonna get them because who's gonna get Jesse's dance in the beginning of Nightmare on Elm Street 2 when he's unpacking his room? I get that. You might get that. The girl down the street might get that, but maybe the old folks down the street won't. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But on the other hand, this is a great fucking show. Um, like I said, rough around the edges, but it is hilarious. It's heart in the right place. Dee Schneider is hilarious in it. There's a lot of cameos. Um, Derek Mears, Kane Hodder, John Landis, Daniel Harris, a whole bunch of fuck people. Tony Todd has one episode basically dedicated to himself. And he's fucking hilarious in that, too. This is just really good show. And I think I want to see shows more like this on TV. But this is not really on TV. This is on Fearnet, unless you do have Fearnet. I don't have Fearnet. I have Fearnet, uh, Fearnet on demand. So that's how I watched the show whenever it came on. It's um, Fearnet on demand. And I would watch it every Tuesday. I think it was on every Tuesday. And there, um, there's a Christmas special coming on in December for the show. And then the season two officially starts spring 2013. Probably this aired this season aired in April this year. This season two will probably be April 2013. I highly recommend this show if you're especially if you're a fan of Joe Lynch and Adam Green. If you're not, don't bother because you're just gonna hate the show. But I can't imagine anyone that can hate those guys since they're just big horror fans just like us. But I highly recommend it. Holliston season one. And that's actually all I have for now. Um I have Puppet Master 3 DVD remastered. I'm gonna order Parley Part 2 and Dark Angel Ascent. Full Moon's having their um Halloween sale, so I'm really gonna take advantage more of that before it closes up. Um and then I'll highly shoot another one in two to three weeks. Until then, later.